Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're going on a curry adventure. Yes, we're talking about the Indian Spice Curry. Now, I know very little about curry. All I know is I absolutely love curry, but I am super intimidated by it. And I don't know why I was so afraid because reading curry recipes, I'm like, oh, 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 well, that's easy. You just use the curry powder and then everything else comes together like that. Well, I found a website called Ahead of Time, which is time spelled like the spice, not time. Anyway, and um, they have a whole bunch of kind of Asian and Indian inspired things. And I had so much fun looking through their recipes. And I found this chicken curry fried rice recipe that looked so easy that I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna hope that I do it justice because I really do love curries and my husband loves curries. Um, so I wanna get more confident at curries and I thought this recipe looked super easy. It's kind of like novice level. So I'm really excited about trying this and I'm pretty sure it should turn out just fine as long as I can read directions. And you know, sometimes they can't read directions, but that's okay. Today I've read through the directions and we're gonna master this. Well, at least we're gonna get something edible. So are you ready for this adventure? I hope you'll join me. Let's go. You're gonna need two tablespoons of vegetable oil, half of a cup of onions, finely chopped, two tablespoons of garlic, minced, one boneless and skinless chicken breast, cooked and cut into half inch cubes, third of a cup of mushrooms, finely chopped, three cups of long grain white rice, cooked, it can be warm or cold, half of a cup of frozen peas, two tablespoons of yellow curry powder, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ground pepper, and one tablespoon of fresh parsley. I'm going to use dried parsley. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our chicken cooking. Um, the recipe actually calls for cooked chicken. I'm just gonna cook the chicken right into the skillet, but because of the way that this recipe is written, which I super appreciate, you can use leftovers and make this up because it's cooked chicken, cooked rice, and I just cooked my rice in the Instant Pot. So uh, it's really actually a good leftover forward uh, meal. I really like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my skillet going. I'm going to set my temperature to medium high, which is about 375 ish. And I apologize for the buzzing. If you hear the buzzing, um, it's the nature of induction pans and burners. It is what it is. Now, since uh, they didn't have cook their chicken in the recipe, I'm going to go ahead and cook with some extra oil in my pan. So I want to go ahead and heat it up and then I'll get about a tablespoon of oil in and then we'll get that chicken cooked up and then we'll start the recipe all together. And once the oil gets shimmery and it is almost there, we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken that has been cut up and diced. Um, it only asked for one boneless skinless chicken breast. I'm using chicken thighs so I just kind of guessed that ended up being about two and a half to three chicken thighs. And I just cut them ahead of time because I know those stir fry and cook much more quickly inside the pan um, as little bits. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken and we're just gonna give it, we're just gonna cook it well until it's done. And I'm gonna go ahead and season that with a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna sprinkle in some salt and about half as much pepper. It didn't say to have seasoned chicken, but I assume since it's already cooked, they don't want it to be bland chicken. But again, I, maybe not. And for those of you who might ask, this is the stainless steel nonstick skillet from Pampered Chef. It has become one of my favorite skillets to use. This one is the wok, but we have a 10 inch skillet and a 12 inch skillet and I think a little six inch skillet. Um, they have become my favorite because of how they are designed and how they cook. So if you're in the market for some new pans, definitely check out Pampered Chef's new stainless steel non-stick. Um, they have that hex clad in there. They are super, I love them. I think they're amazing. All right, and once you see that 
chicken starting to brown and get a little color, um, it's probably done. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put it in my sieve here over a bowl because I want to drain off as much of that oil, that extra oil that I put in as humanly possible because uh, I don't wanna mess up the recipe. You know what I'm saying? All right, and now we're gonna start the recipe the way it reads. So we're gonna add two cups of oil to our skillet and or our wok, whichever one you fancy, and we're gonna heat it up until it's shimmering. And if you're using an induction burner, it will take just a few seconds. If you're using a regular hob, you know, like a electric or gas or even ceramic, it's gonna take up to two minutes for that oil to get all shimmery. But ours, since our pan is already hot from the chicken, I, it's definitely just gonna be a second. Once it's shimmery, we're gonna add our onions and our garlic, and we're gonna saute this for about two minutes. Now, they had an optional kind of addition, which I'm like, well, of course I want to do that. So, while this starts to go, we're gonna actually beat up a couple eggs using our whipped cream maker here because I want them to be light and fluffy. And we're nearly already done with this recipe. It's a quick one. All right, my eggs are beaten. They'll be nice and fluffy. We're gonna add them to the pan and then we're just gonna continue to flat fry until they're nice and fluffy. Do you see how it is not the eggs are not sticking to the bottom of this pan. That's the non-stick stainless steel. It's pretty fascinating. All right, once it's mostly cooked, we're gonna add in our mushrooms. Give that a good mix. And then we're gonna add back in our chicken. Now I wanna show you, see all of that liquid we drained off of that chicken? Yep. That's so I didn't mess up the recipe. I don't know if it was right, but that's what I did. All right, so let's give that a good mix. And we're gonna stir fry this for another two minutes or until all the veg gets nice and soft and the chicken warms through. And since we just cooked the chicken, I mean, it's already warm, but if you were using cold chicken, that would be the point. This already smells amazing, even without the curry. Right, and once the two minutes is up, we're gonna add our salt and pepper, our curry, and our soy. And we are gonna mix this all up nice so that everything kinda sees that yellow curry. Whoops, I was supposed to add the rice first. Okay, hold on, and the peas, okay. Let's go ahead and add the peas, and then we'll get the rice. See, I can't read directions well. All right, and don't do a Heather. I actually made three cups of dry rice, thinking that's what I'm going to use for this recipe, but three cups of dry rice makes about six cups of cooked rice. So, that being the case, Looks like I'm gonna have some fried rice later this week after this. So, I think I'm gonna make instant pot fried rice. Have you ever heard of it? It's fascinating, maybe I'll make it next week. Okay, now that we've got the rice added, let's get this all mixed together and stir fried for the fried rice. And they didn't really specify which kind of long grain rice to use. Um, this is actually basmati, um, but I'm sure you could use jasmine or another long grain rice, um, but this, this is just the one that I chose to use. All right, oh my goodness, this is looking so good. So you'll know it's done when your peas are cooked, and since they are pre-cooked peas just frozen, probably doesn't take long. Yep, they are, they are done. All right, let's go ahead and turn off our burner because that's it. Okay, let's get this onto our serving platter. Oh my goodness, the smell is amazing. The look is amazing. You know, they say you eat with your eyes. My eyes are saying, come on, come on. That looks pretty phenomenal. I'm just gonna say, good job, Heather. Good job ahead of time. Okay, so, 
they really just wanted the fresh parsley for looks, for serving. So I'll just put some dried parsley. I know it's dried, not fresh. I'm just trying to follow the directions. And oh my goodness, would you just look at how beautiful that curry chicken fried rice looks. I mean, if it just tastes half as good as it looks, it's going to be delicious. But we know how it looks, but how does it taste? So I'm going to just take, make sure I get a little bit of everything that I see. My chicken and my rice and my green peas. Of course they're green peas. My peas. And we're going to give it a taste. Oh, that is a party in your mouth. Oh my goodness. That is, okay, the curry flavor in this is super punchy, but subdued at the same time. I don't even know how to, exp that's total contrasts. It, you can taste the curry spices and it's not hot. I mean, there is some spice there and it is warming the back of my tongue, but you know that I'm a wimp when it comes, or you might know that I'm a wimp when it comes to hot things. Um, but this curry is mild. Maybe that's what I want to say. It's so flavorful. It's so punchy with flavor, but the curry itself is so mild. Okay, I thought I would show you the curry powder that I used. This is an organic curry powder that I actually bought at Walmart. And um, I, am, I am blown away at how this tastes. This is one of those things I will probably make again very soon for company. It is so fantastic. Um, and how quickly it came together and how easy it was to assemble, even when I messed kind of those steps up, this right here is fantastic. Thank you very much ahead of time. I'm gonna be looking at some more of your recipes and seeing if I can um, up my Indian food game um, over the next six months or so, because wow, that is fantastic. You guys, if you like curry and you like fried rice, this was super easy. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure, curry. In fact, right now I'm kind of looking for Indian inspired recipes that I can increase my knowledge of the Indian cuisine and that flavor and all of the good things about Indian food that I love. So if you have any of those recipes or ideas for me, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm gonna still be searching. I'm gonna still be adventuring. You may see some of those adventures and some of them will just be in my own kitchen, but you better believe this is a win and I really do think you should try it. All right, you guys, we will see you on the next adventure. Bye.